A portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace. We've just finished building this entire kitchen completely from scratch. But I've still got one last issue. Do your drawers also look like this, this, and this? Well, today we're gonna fix all that with some 3D printed parts. Well, actually, quite a lot of 3D printed parts. Hold on. There's a little more. So this huge pile of 3D printed parts is gonna solve all our organizational issues in the entire kitchen. As for the last weeks, if not months, 3D printing and designing all these parts, there's probably hundreds, if not close to a thousand parts that I've printed over the course of this project, and they're all meant to help organize my kitchen. And in case you're interested, they can organize your kitchen as well. All the 3D files that you'll see in this entire video will be able to download on my website, which is alch.shop. All right, first up, the drawer with cutlery. Right now, we've got everything in one big piece of Tupperware, and everything else is just a complete mess. Let's start by getting rid of all of that. And now the way we're gonna organize all this is with three printed boxes and they're all gonna fit into a base grid system. This is quite similar to the one I've used to organize basically my whole entire life and my entire workshop with. So this base grid will go in the bottom of the drawer including two little tiny pieces to fill out the back section. And the purpose of having this grid system in the bottom is that you have something in the bottom of the drawer that doesn't move around when you move the drawer. So you can put a random box anywhere in the drawer Move it as much as you want, and that one will never move. This drawer is going to be pretty simple. I made one, two, three boxes for the knives, forks, and spoons, and a smaller box for the small spoons. And then for the larger stuff, I've just printed a larger box that will go in the back here. But in case your printer isn't able to print a large box like this in one go, I've also made split versions of all the larger boxes so that you can print them in two individual pieces so that once you put everything in place and everything is filled out, everything stays completely in place and organized and you don't even have to glue together the individual parts. However, you can easily glue them together if you'd like to have complete boxes. I've just glued this together with a bit of CA glue and it's more than strong enough. And I mean, doesn't this just look awesome? But before we go any further, there's a few cool things that I've done with these boxes. They're new compared to the old assortment system that I'm in my workshop. So this is the base grid for my organization system that I have for all my tools in my workshop. This grid system is based on a 55 by 55 millimeter grid. So this would be the smallest box. This is what I call a one by one because it just fills out one grid slot. And this box is a two by two because it fills out two by two grid slots. And the way the system lock into place with the grid is that the geometry here snaps into place and keeps everything really securely attached. Now the one for the kitchen here is essentially the same. However, the grid system is based on a 40 by 40 millimeter grid. So the smallest possible box would be quite small. Now the reason I've done that isn't necessarily to have smaller boxes, but to have finer control over the sizes. So these two would both be two by twos. However, you can see that this one is a lot smaller and a three by three from the kitchen system is about the same size as the two by two from my workshop. So by decreasing the grid system, I was able to get a bit more variation in the sizes. But not only that, some of you might have noticed that the box in the back here didn't have a full last row of grids. That's because I've also decided to make all the boxes in all the different sizes available in half sizes as well. So if a three by seven was just slightly too big, you can print a three by six and a half and it will fill out the space much better. Now you can obviously also go completely overboard with this and create boxes that had half sizes extra on two sides or boxes that have them on all four sides, creating these really tiny ones. I'll try to make as many variations of these as possible, and I'll all include them in the downloads you can get on alch.shop. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's deal with the next drawer. This one has a bunch of random stuff as always. And you can see the first 3D printed part already, a custom holder for my knives. The way this part works is that it's actually printed in two parts with a couple of holes at the end for some dowels so that the whole thing 
snaps together, fill the drawer with the base grids. For this one, I've chosen white boxes. Here you can see the back one has the half row. And to raise the knives up a little bit, printed this surprise big red box that will go in the bottom. That's a feature that allows this thing to sit on top and you have a secret compartment underneath your knives. Oh yeah, and in case it's not obvious, I haven't spent any real time actually organizing the things that go into the organizer boxes. So now, as we tackle the next drawer, let's talk about the other things that are new with this system. Starting off with the base grid. These will be available in all sorts of different sizes, and just like everywhere else, they go in the bottom of the drawer. The goal here is to completely fill out the entire surface. But naturally, not all the drawers are the exact same size, and not all of them can be divided into a 40 millimeter grid. In the past, I've tried stretching the grid to make it wider on one side than the other to completely fill out the drawer in my workshop. That's a huge pain because you end up with boxes that won't be able to fit both directions anymore. And with different size drawers, you end up with boxes that are different sizes depending on the different drawers and you won't be able to interchange them anymore. My solution to that are the pieces that you've already seen and the ones that allow us to have half size boxes. These are literally just a section of base grid that are cut off at a certain width and you add these to the back or sides of your drawer to completely fill out the base. These will be available in all the increments. That way you can completely fill out the base of your drawer no matter what the size is. And you can maintain the 40 by 40 millimeter grid. And with the addition of the half size boxes, in case the 40 millimeter grid doesn't perfectly line up with your drawer. Worst case, if your drawer is just too small for half size, you'll end up with a 19 millimeter gap in total in either the width or the length. Actually, let me show you real quick. This is a drawer in my workshop, and the dimension here doesn't add up to 40 millimeters, which means that if I put the base grid in here, I'll be left with a gap of just over 30 millimeters, for which I printed these spacers that will go on either side, as well as in the back, so that the base grid now completely fills out the entire drawer and everything stays in place, so I can fill the whole thing with boxes, and we'll make the best use of the space with the boxes that are half grid longer. Completely random sized drawer, everything fits perfectly, there's an even gap on each one of the sides, and I can easily interchange any one of these boxes. Now, I've actually spent a ton of time making sure to create all sorts of different variation of both the boxes and the base grids and all the other cool stuff you're about to see in this video. And like I said before, I'll make all that available on my website. A website which I created using Squarespace, which just so happened to be today's sponsor, so let me tell you a little bit about them. Now, Squarespace is actually a huge part of the reason why I'm able to do what I do. I actually started using Squarespace to create my website and sell my products on that website long before they started sponsoring my video. So whether you sell physical or digital products, Squarespace has the merchandising features to make your products look your best online. That includes both e-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Squarespace enabled me to super quickly and easily create my own website. And now with the new Squarespace Fluid Engine, it has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Start with their best-in-class website template and customize every design detail with their newly reimagined drag-and-drop technology. That also works on both desktop and mobile. Now you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when we ready to launch, head to squarespace.com A-L-C-H for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. For this drawer, since it's gonna have mostly large utensils, I've just printed a couple of large boxes, again, in sections to perfectly fill out the drawer. The next one here, a lot of the same thing. Base grid, and actually the exact same size boxes. Which actually leads me to the last new thing about these boxes, and that is the way they look on the inside. The boxes that I have in the workshop, once you take the contents out, you can see the base grid system in the bottom. They also have a space where you can put a label, which is super handy, especially if you have a bunch of different size screws in these. The new boxes are completely smooth in the bottom. Because although I like this aesthetic, I felt that for a kitchen or a bit more a home setting, it's nicer to have something that's a bit more smooth and doesn't look as 3D printed. They also don't have a space for a label because I figured you can probably see which one is the spoon and which ones is the knife. But in case you like the old system where the grid is visible, this also prints a little faster and takes a bit less plastic and you want the label, the new system will also be available in that same exact style and with all the different sizes and variations. Now talking about making these not look like they're 3D printed, Great opportunity to say a huge thank you to Bamboo Lab, which has supplied me with both a couple of printers and a ton of filament 
for this entire project. This filament is actually their marble, which has a marble-like texture, which does a fantastic job at hiding the layer lines from the 3D printing. Although the layer lines on the prints that come off these machines are barely visible to begin with, because I gotta be honest here, I've printed probably a couple hundred hours now with the X1 Carbon and the P1P, and they are hands down by far the best 3D printers I've ever used. They're really reliable, they're super fast, they print really clean. And by the way, this might be the biggest 3D printing project I've done to date, just because of the sheer volume of different 3D printed parts. This entire bin is actually just full of previous iterations or tests for parts in this video. And these Pamela printers want one of the most important tools in this process because they print so quickly that really sped up the process of iterating through different versions of these parts, printing test pieces before I print the big final versions. If you're thinking about getting a 3D printer, I can highly recommend these. There's an affiliate link in the description below, and by using that, you also support this channel. So this can all go back in there, and we'll close that up and call that good for now. Moving on to all our nightmare Tupperware boxes. No matter how much time we spend organizing this, you always end up with a bunch of random lids that you don't know if belong to any of the boxes and the other way around. Now, I wanna fix all of that. My goal is to make it virtually impossible to ever mess up the Tupperware drawer ever again. And step one is gonna be pick a system and stick to it. So I bought Tupperware from all the big brands, figured out which ones I liked, and the one I ended up with is actually Ikea. They make some really good Tupperware, both in glass and plastic. It's relatively inexpensive, at least if you compare it to some of the other brands like OXO. It's super easy to get, probably around the world. And what I really like is that they have a range of different lids that fit a variation of different sizes, and both the glass and the plastic lids are the same. So this is the first box, 4x4 grid system. Into these, we'll put all the plastic boxes, and then you can see where this is going. Glass more boxes and even more boxes and then for the lids had to get a bit creative made this large box that i split into two so it's essentially a four and a half by eight into which the bamboo lids and the regular snap in place lids fit <laughs> I've also got slightly larger boxes for the larger glass containers. And again, same thing with the box, same footprint for the smaller plastic ones and the even larger glass ones, which all share the same type of lids, plastic and bamboo, which will all neatly stack in place like this. Hey, come on, didn't this just turn out great? I'm super happy with it. I'll never have to worry about where the different sizes of Tupperware go. And because of the base grid system, even though the bottom one here isn't completely filled out, nothing will move around, even if I open and close it really fast. And now did you know that IKEA also makes these adorable little glass containers that have the same style of lids? So of course I had to make a box that holds four of these with the lids. I'm not sure how necessary this was. I also found these freezer containers, which are essentially just flimsy Tupperware. So I made this contraption, which is three separate boxes, all with the grid system, that now all just fit in the drawers like this. And we'll fill up the last little bit of space with the box and fill it up with the best noodles you can buy. Another one that has a tendency to get super messy, the place where you keep Ziploc bags, aluminum foil, cling film. Ziploc bags especially are super annoying. They come in these cardboard boxes, there's multiple sizes, and after a while, this whole thing just becomes super flimsy. So here's actually a new type of box, one with a lid on it, and the lid slides off in some tracks. And the different size Ziploc bags fit perfectly in there, slide the lid back on, and you can grab yourself one on one Ziploc bag. Now, depending on how many you got in here, one bag doesn't actually fill out the whole space. I made these spacer pieces that go in the bottom. Ziploc bags go back on top, close it up, and now they're easily reachable and easy to pull out. And the little lip here makes sure that the plastic bag stays far enough in so that they don't stick out and interfere with the drawer. And actually, I made a box for each one of the sizes, all with color-coordinated lids. And my last little party trick is that it's kind of annoying to try and pull something out of these boxes with one hand because the box wants to rise up. However, with this one, that should be much less of an issue. At least it's a little bit better. That's because the spacer pieces are actually hollow and I've decided to fill them up with concrete to give them some weight so that they help weigh the box down and make it easier 
to grab a plastic bag. And I made these boxes in a range of different colors for essentially all the different things I can think of. All four of the IKEA Ziploc bags. I made smaller ones for freezer bags. Really large ones. Not really sure what to use these for, but there's also freezer bags in there. Two small ones. I've got gloves in this one. Ice cube bags. I mean, you get it. And another thing I thought about, what if you don't want to fill the entire drawer? How do you make sure that everything still stays in place? So I've experimented a little bit with gluing together multiple of the grid pieces to make one big section that spans the whole depth of the drawer. The thought was that you can put in just a sectional box and all of this stays attached together and you get some free open space but larger stuff that you don't really need the box for. But I mean, we have the boxes, so why not fill up the rest of the drawer as well? I mean, doesn't this just look super neat? All the different colors, everything is filled out. Obviously, this is just a random collection of boxes. It's probably not the way it's gonna stay, but that's the beauty of the system. If I need a different configuration, I'll just print some different boxes and fix it. For now, I think this is a pretty good start. By the way, I've got a second one of those big drawers. No idea what to do with this one. I've started, but it's a mess still. And by the way, this is what happens if you don't have the grid system. Not great. All right, we're in the home stretch. From here on out, it's probably gonna get even more personalized to my exact needs, like this drawer, which I've already done. As you can see, this drawer is for glasses, and it's just four of these pieces. They perfectly fit into this exact drawer. Hold the glasses in place, because this kitchen has way more drawer space than regular cabinet space. And as a quick little bonus, the only part that isn't gonna go inside of a drawer, this contraption, meant to hold a bottle. I had some extra space in the cupboard where the pots and pans are. Mounted them up there. This one will go there. The second one will go next to it. And now we have some extra storage for some bottles. And I swear I printed the third one, but I have no idea what that is. On to the final and probably the most specific one to our needs, because this is kind of a weird one. The drawer has this massive cutout because of the ventilation. The three printed boxes are already in place. Now the only question is, what are these for? Well, these are holders for these little spice jars to perfectly fit into place. But before I show you the finished result, I thought it could be interesting to talk about how to design three printed parts to fit weird shapes like these. Most of the time, I'm designing parts that are meant to fit with pretty standardized things, like nuts and bolts or bearings. These are all pretty straightforward. Relatively easy dimensions to measure, input into the 3D model, and then print them out and have them fit. Even things like these plastic bins, pretty straightforward to just measure the diameter, and then pretty much first try, the bins will fit. However, this is kind of a weird shape. And as you can see, it's sort of taking me a few tries to get it right. As a matter of fact, there's over 20 different 3D printed models here. So why did it take me this many attempts to get everything right? Well, actually, it only took me three or four tries to go from this to one that I was really happy with. This one essentially fit perfectly. And after a few more additional small changes, we had a 3D model that essentially looks the same like the one I have in the kitchen now. So naturally, printed a whole bunch of these, took them all home, Try them for the first time with the other spice holders that I have at home. <laughs> Only to discover that my assumption that all these are the same is completely wrong. Because as opposed to all these, which will essentially be identical to one another, turns out things that are made out of the glass aren't necessarily the same. And I just happened to use the smallest one I had to design all of these so that all the other ones, which were bigger, didn't fit in any of them. Which I guess is a good lesson because I'm not used to designing parts for glass objects. And even though I'm sure IKEA makes tens of thousands of these, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all the same. Now that moment, a whole new round was testing and printing and adjusting all the variables for all the multiple sizes and everything I wanted. But at the end, we got there. So now we're ready for the final and probably my favorite drawer. <laughs> doesn't this just look so good? And because of the height, I couldn't put these all the way to the end. So on the side here, there's a space for a bowl of salt, easy access. And this one was also really fun, a custom insert for a pepper mill. And you know what? That's the last drawer. For now, that's all the organizing we're gonna do with 3D printing. I know that some of them might be very specific to my needs, but I hope and think that a lot of these boxes can be very useful for you as well. So if you wanna print them, head over to alch.shop and pick yourself up some 3D files. As for now, thanks so much for watching and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.